right, so welcome back again. Hopefully you like this stuff, because I love it. And if you like it half as much as me, uh, hopefully you're having fun. Half enough is plenty. Uh, so we're going to finish our tic-tac-toe game. Uh, it's going to get called from our swift stuff, and it's going to just all magically work as soon as we finish writing uh, this pressed square button. So we're going to go in, we're going to implement uh, the get mark type at index, which is a short one-liner, uh, and then we'll do press square, uh, and press square is fairly easy, uh, but then it's going to also necessitate check for new game, uh, which is going to be harder, <laughs> right? So it's, it's kind of big. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in to do these things. Uh, so the first one, get mark type at index. Uh, we're just going to take our game board uh, and the index that they pass in. We're just going to give you the mark type right back. The thing that you will notice that's different is game board, as you recall, is not a property. Uh, it was actually just a, a plain old IVAR, so it was actually inside uh, like the curly braces of the of the interface file, and so you didn't say self dot. Uh, just to share, the only real difference is that you don't get memory management, but but we're only making one of them, so it, it turned out to be fine. So that one was easy. Uh, the harder one is uh, is press square. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go look at my Swift code, uh, and I'm just going to port it basically, right? So I've kind of got, this was my Swift code. I've got my playground open over here. Uh, and so what I want to do is I just kind of want to port uh, this code from one, one language to the other language. Now, usually you won't be, you know, porting like this to Objective-C from Swift. Uh, but, you know, at least it lets you see how the two languages interact. Uh, so we're going to say if, uh, and then we've got a condition, game board index uh, is not equal to mark type none, then what we want to do is we just want to return. Uh, great, so I mean that was a pretty straight port. Uh, you can see what it was in Swift, you can see what it is in Objective-C, uh, no big deal. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our uh, if statement. Uh, we're just going to say if uh, self.gameState is equal to game state x turn. Uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to set the game board's uh, index uh, equal to mark type x. That was easy. Uh, we also want to set the game state, uh, which is a property, whereas the other one's not, uh, to game state uh, the other person's turn, so O's turn. Uh, and then we want to self check for game over. Uh, and we need to go write that that method, right? So we need to stick it somewhere. Uh, I'm not really putting a lot of effort into thinking about where I should put these code. Uh, whenever I do a big project, I make like an area for the public methods. I make an area for the private methods. I put underscores in front of my private method names. Um, I'm not really doing that level of detail here, but, but when you do a big project, that's something you want to think about. Uh, now I've got to implement the else area. Uh, so it's going to be very similar to some of the things I did above. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy from above uh, and then, you know, port to the code below. Uh, so I'm going to look for O's turn, uh, and I'm going to put an O there. And then if it was just O's turn, it's probably X's turn, uh, but I'll check for game over. All right, so uh, the beauty of porting is you don't have to think. Uh, you just have to do... Uh, and so long as your logic from before was right, your logic here should be right as well, all right? So this is pressed to square. Uh, it goes back and forth between different people's turns. And the game is actually much more playable now. It's just that you won't win, right? So you'll say X's turn, and it'll say, great, now it's O's turn, and now it's X's turn. So there's no way to, to win uh, this game, right? So you can see it in the game state, which printed out here, everything is working. It's just not checking for game over. All right, so check for game over is the last thing we got to write, uh, and then we will have a beautiful mix and match app. Let's go look and see what check for game over did in Swift land, uh, and I'm just going to copy uh, the plan from him. All right, so copy it over from the Swift code, comment it out so it doesn't throw a ton of errors. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is we want to check to see uh, if the game is over. So if the game is over, uh, we're going to use a contain string again. Um, instead of looking at the array for the game board, though, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to just look at the game string. So 
We've actually got a method for that already. So we've it's called get game board string, and this is the thing that I'd like to check uh, for containing uh, a, a non-existent space. So we're going to say contain string uh, because that's an easy way to do it here, and we're going to check to see if there are any nuns inside of it. Uh, also, there's uh, various things I've done wrong here. Uh, I need to call that function, so I need to put a bracket at the end. You'll notice that it put the bracket at the start for me, and I actually want does not contain, so I'm just going to put a not uh, right in front of it, just like we did in Swift. So if the game board string does not contain any hyphens, that means there's no open space, then self dot game state is equal to game state chi, right? Great, so that's exactly what we did before. Uh, we've just ported it over to Objective-C, from Swift to Objective-C, uh, and that works out just fine. Now, the game might be won when you put in that ninth piece, so we we're, we're going to check for a win after the fact. So you can see that what we did down here is we made a an array, uh, so we're going to do the same thing again here. It's going to need to be a mutable array because we're going to be modifying it. It's called lines of three, uh, which is fine. Uh, and we're just going to create an NS mutable array uh, alloc init. Now, a really astute observer would notice that in Swift, um, you have to say what type an array is, whereas in Objective-C, you don't say the type at all. And that's, a, that's just how they work, right? So in Objective-C, you can actually mix and match. You can have like an array that contains some of one time a variable and some of another type of variable. I don't recommend it, but you totally can. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say lines of three, uh, add object. And then the object that we would like to add is going to be a string that's three characters long. Um, now before we, we use get game string, here we're going to have to make up a new method uh, to, to call, um, which I'm going to call uh, get string for location. Uh, and I'm just going to pass in location. So I'm just going to say like location zero. And then I'll say location two uh, is going to be like, you know, a one in this case. Oops, I meant to say location two. Uh, and then uh, location three uh, is going to be the two. Uh, so that's going to get a lot easier to see as soon as I clean it up a little bit here. So in Objective-C, what I like to do is I like to break them up into their own lines. So I'm going to call this function, which I need to go write, uh, get string uh, for location one, location two, location three. So that's the, the function I would like to write, and it's going to give you a string uh, made up of those pieces. What I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to print it uh, below wherever I, I printed out the game board before. So here's my get game board string. I'm going to put this function right below it uh, because it's going to be really similar. Right? So it's going to return a string. Uh, it's going to get these locations. Uh, as far as the integer type here, you can use whatever you want. You can use ns integer. Uh, you can use int. Uh, just to prove the point, uh, I'm going to use int. Uh, so location one, uh, and then we've got a location two and a location three. So I'm just going to call them like that. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to auto format it, you can also hit command, or sorry, control, not command, I, uh, and that'll move it over. And so we want to build up a string of just those guys. It's actually going to be very similar to the function above. It's just for fewer indices, right? So before we looped over everybody, uh, so I'm just going to take out the for loop here. So instead of going over everybody, we're just going to do uh, location one, two, and three. So again, doing this quickly, uh, because once you see the finished code, uh, you'll realize that it's pretty straightforward. So we've got a function that returns a string. It receives three locations, which are indexes. Um, and it's got uh, one, two, and three. And then we're just going to build up a string, one character at a time. Uh, and it's going to return these things. So if there's an x, an o, and an x, it'll just return x, o, x, right? So helper method done. Uh, let's go back to calling it. Uh, so let's see if I can find where that code was before. Uh, I'm actually, just so it doesn't get too long, going to put this back under just one line because uh, that'll make my life easier. Uh, and you can see, just like what we did before, uh, we're going to do again here. Uh, and that's just go through and look at every possible combination. 
So our first chunk is looking across the rows. Uh, and then our next chunk uh, is going to need to, so that one's done. Porting, you just kind of delete as you go. I've done a lot of code porting, by the way. Uh, I've ported apps from Android into iOS. Uh, so I've spent a lot of hours of porting, usually from Java to Objective-C. Um, so all right, I've almost got my columns done here. And again, I'm not really even thinking. I'm just trusting that I did it right before. Um, and if I did it right before and I, I port it without mistake, uh, then it should just work, right? Uh, things like that have no problems. And then you can do the last one here as well. Uh, and the order on the diagonals here, I did two, four, six, doesn't matter. If you'd rather do six, four, two, that works just as well. All right, so now I've got my array uh, all set, which was kind of fun. Now what I need to do is I need to actually loop over it. Uh, so I'm going to say for, I'll go ahead and use an enhanced uh, for loop this time. It seems like I've been using the old school ones more. Uh, but I mean, Objective-C can do this, uh, this cool in lines of three thing as well. Uh, so it doesn't have to be an old school C for loop. You can use these new things. And what we want to do is we want to, we just want to say if line of three line, make sure you get line, not line. So the, uh, the string, uh, so line of three, uh, is equal to string uh, if it's x x x uh, that means for the next one again I forgot my bracket so I'm just going to type it now and it, it adds it to the beginning which is cool uh, and so if that's the case then we just want to say game state is equal to uh, game state x win great uh, and then if it's not that one uh, it might be somebody else so I'm just going to copy this uh, paste it there so if it's equal to O, 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 uh, then it must be an O win. I copied an extra L so there. Uh, and you can see that there that port is complete. Uh, so it's interesting how little I've thought lately. Uh, I've just been porting code. Uh, but there's a chance that I just finished this app, right? Uh, so if I run it, uh, I can see if I've made any huge embarrassing errors or not. Uh, so X is turn, good. Uh, the, the print looks good, uh, O looks good, X, O, X, X wins, voila. Perhaps I ought to have O win one as well. Uh, so if I have O win there, that's great. Uh, and you could check it on a number of different uh, win directions. You could also check it on iPad as well. Uh, I'll just go ahead and run one on the iPad. Uh, all right, here you go, I brought up an iPad 2, and the iPad should be able to run in portrait or landscape. I mean, these are all things that you set up before, right? Uh, and you can see that it, it should work great. Trying to click after a win has no effect. Uh, everything is, is good to go. All right, so that is it for the Tic-Tac-Toe app. Uh, once you've tried it out, uh, you've seen that it works, uh, go ahead and submit this thing. Notice that on Moodle, assuming you're taking this class for credit, this submission is separate from the rest of the Objective-C follow-along playgrounds, right? So there's two independent things. There's the tic-tac-toe Dropbox, uh, and then there's also the rest of the Objective-C playgrounds Dropbox. All right, that's it for the follow-along stuff. Uh, come back next time, and we'll do a lab. See you then. Bye.